Welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage. I'm here to give you a front row seat to the Emmys, Oscars, SAG, and Tony's races. Who is in the running? What makes an award-worthy performance? And what are the secrets to giving one? These intimate, inspirational conversations with some of today's most talented stars provide you, dear listener, the kind of craft and career advice that could win you a statue of your own, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. When I graduated college, I realized that this was This was my life. It was my only life. Cool. And I was going to pursue it regardless of what anyone wanted me to do or would hope for me to do. And I just went for it. Um, How have you been? Tired. Did you love... (laughs) Okay, good. Allie White, remind us of what you do here and what you're up to. I am the digital managing editor at Backstage, Mm -hmm. and I kind of oversee the website and the content that goes into it and the stuff that happens on the back end and all that jazz. If anyone's ever been to (laughs) Backstage.com, a lot of that is because of And if you haven't, you should go visit it. (laughs) We, had, we do have to plug backstage.com Dot com. every once in a while. Slash magazine. Um, but I asked you here today because we want to talk, I mean, it's a little bit random, but I just happen to know that you and I are both fans of today's podcast guest. We both are <laughs> big fans of today's podcast guest. Oh, who is who? Who is who? Uh, none other than <laughs> Miss Lucy Liu, fellow Dude. Chi Omega, oh. fellow <laughs> University of Michigan graduate. So is this why you're a fan? No. No. Okay. I, did, I mean, yeah. no. She's such a New Yorker, too. She's Born straight out of Queens. Straight out of Queens. Um, she goes to a lot of Broadway shows. I know she's always talking about, like, she really likes theater. And that and show, and... Elementary, that she was in for however yes, many seasons. just wrapped. Filmed on all location over. in New York. Amazing. So she was all always all over the place. Totally. And uh, I believe her Netflix movie, Set It Up, which we both yes, loved. Also filmed in so New York. Much. She's incredible in that. She's so versatile. She is, because I was also looking at her, like, she's maybe most well-known for Kill Bill. Charlie's Angels. She's a small role. Well, Charlie's Angels, yes. So Charlie's Angels, so she's, like, action star, action comedy star. uh, Rom-com star. Definitely rom-com star. And then she has an Emmy nomination for Allie McBeal. Oh, yeah, she was an Allie McBeal. It's sort of like Allie White, Allie McBeal. Yes, spelled differently. So, um... (laughs) Lucy Liu is on the podcast today. Elementary is wrapping up. She's also in this new CBS drama, Why Women Kill. That looks... <laughs> can I curse on the podcast? Yeah, of course. It looks f***ing crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. In the best way possible. Totally. Her shoulder pads <laughs> couldn't be God. bigger. Her bangs yeah. couldn't be more teased. Totally. And I can't wait. You know what? She has made a career out of killing shitty men. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you or remember like, Chicago? Oh, yeah. She was in Chicago, She's in Chicago too. for two minutes and steals the entire movie. She's the one who, like, takes over the spotlight from Roxy Hart. Yes. Yeah. By killing men. By killing men. <laughs> no, she's amazing. She's really good at killing men. She's really good at being very, like, vicious and, like, um, fancy. Like, highbrow. Yes. You know? She's, like, if Dynasty... She's very Dynasty. Yes. Yeah. She's, like, a old-timey soap opera star Yeah. with, like, a bite, I guess. For sure. But then she can also play... Watson to Johnny yeah. Lee Miller's Sherlock Holmes. Totally. Like, she's good at emotional drama. I just think of her as someone who, how do you teach charisma? Like, she's one of those people in my mind where I'm like, no one can copy Lucy Liu because she's got something, she's got that something. She's got that uh, special <laughs> sauce, as they yeah. say. Um, well, thank you, Allie, for helping yeah. me introduce Lucy. That There's lots to talk about with her, so I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. I'm really just mostly interested in her reminiscing about her time living in the same house that I did in college. Yeah, I'll be sure to ask her about that. Definitely ask her about that. That seems really crucial to her uh, (laughs) career trajectory. This podcast is brought to you by Backstage, the world's number one casting platform. Listen, a lot of the guests on In the Envelope, an awards podcast, 
used backstage at the beginning of their careers. It's how they are now in the running for Emmy, for Oscar, for Tony, etc. If you are at the beginning of your career as an artist, here's what you do. You go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope at checkout for a free 30-day trial. That's right, free 30-day trial if you go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope. All you gotta do then is make a profile, upload a headshot, and start applying to jobs, to the thousands of casting notices that are uploaded every day, which you can filter online to match your specific talents, your specific needs, your specific looks. Get that dream started today. Check out that free 30-day trial, backstage.com slash subscribe, enter the code envelope. Let's do it. Award-winning artist and A-list star Lucy Liu is known for her fabulous work in everything from Charlie's Angels to Kill Bill to last year's Set It Up. Born in Queens and first dreaming of acting at the University of Michigan, Lucy took every theater job and survival gig until her breakout in 1996 with the sitcom Pearl. She then earned a Primetime Emmy nomination for her work on Ally McBeal and later a Critics' Choice Award for Southland. For the last seven years, Lucy has played Joan Watson on CBS's Sherlock Holmes Holmes drama Elementary, and can now be seen in Mark Cherry's CBS All Access series, Why Women Kill, the one and only Lucy Liu. Um, welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. This is exciting. Thank you for being here. We're we're honored. Did you ever, um, what's your relationship with Backstage? Did you ever use us for casting notices or anything? Absolutely. Did you? When I started acting, uh, that's how I went on all my auditions. I was, I had, there was backstage and there was the Ross reports uh-huh. where you would look oh, up all yeah. the agents um, and the managers, I think, were on there as well. But you would go to backstage um, and you would look up auditions for non equity, non union jobs. Yeah. Um, that's how I auditioned for all the things that I did. And then I eventually became equity and then became right. a SAG member and so it was a long you know process and it was all paper then you know yeah and so and you'd circle Just, everything and then you'd yeah. go out to the auditions and you'd cool. show up and you'd sign your name on the dotted line Waiting and then line, yeah, yeah you'd wait online mm-hmm. and then you'd do your monologue <laughs> yep and this was mostly was it theatery gigs yeah commercials? Okay. theater um sweet mostly theater i think there were some you know student films things like that yeah. uh that was basically how it went. I, there was no, awesome. you know, I didn't have a representation when I first started. No, and then, but by chipping away at those gigs, you eventually get that, and then you get equity. It's like the levels. Of- yes, when you get to a certain, yeah. uh, you know, when you go in for something that's equity, and they'll give you, you know, that sort of status. Sort of this weird, yeah. weird catch twenty two where you, yeah. you can't get in the <laughs> union you because you're not. You can't do any union auditions, but then. Yeah. You know, eventually when you do a union job, like, how does it work? I don't even know to this exactly. day. It's confusing. What was your union job that, that got the, the membership? My union job, let me think. Oh. Well, I had done a commercial a long time ago, and then I didn't join the union because I, it was so expensive. This was when I was in college. Yeah. It was just a like somebody said oh, on the subway, hey, would you like to audition for this thing? I was like, okay, why not? Somebody on the subway? Mm-hmm. Oh. In New York. And then... Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I mean, the union was nothing then, but it was still a lot. I didn't have that kind of money. And then when I, I actually went and started auditioning and didn't have a union card, it was even more expensive. And it yeah. just keeps going up and up. So yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you don't really think about that when you're, you know, going to school. <laughs> you don't no. think about you don't think about the budget. No, the realistic the, re- uh, the reality of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally. So at what point? I mean, I would love to hear your whole life story. At what point was the um, <laughs> Was it always acting? Were you bit by the bug? Like, what inspired it? There was nothing else. Oh, ma- amazing. Nothing From a else. young age. Young From age. a young age. Awesome. Wow. Um, I went to school I as I was supposed to go to school mm. and um, studied all the academics. Uh, mm-hmm. And then when I graduated college, I realized that this was, this was my life. It was my only life. Cool. And I was going to pursue it... Uh, regardless of what anyone wanted me to do or wow. would hope for me to do. And hmm. I just went for it. And that's when I 
picked up backstage. Totally. <laughs> and uh, just started going through it, and I didn't have any history in it mm. in the business, so no. I just sort of made it up as I went along. Yeah. I think the non, uh, the unknowing was very helpful because I didn't really know what I was up against. Sure. The extent of the, the uphill climb. <laughs> yeah, or just like who's in the room and, you know, mm. oh, my goodness, who are these people? Because the I didn't have stuff. any history yeah. of them. I didn't know their, the you know, what, the idea of power. I didn't know, understand that uh, at all. It was just sort of went in so green. Sure. And that na- that naivete, that helps. You don't have any fear of not knowing what you're <laughs> when you don't totally. know what you're doing. Totally. And you just feel like you're just going for it. No matter yeah. how good or bad you are, you're just giving it your all. Yeah. You don't have as many um, maybe insecurities and, and, and uh, less self-doubt. Yeah, or you don't know who's in the room at the time, so you're just, yeah. you know, doing your thing. Going all out. Yeah, yes, yeah. you're going all out completely. You're, you're going to 10. Yeah, just go to 10. You're just going to 10. Yeah, well, at a non-ec, when you've been waiting in line for hours, like, you really got to... You got, you got, you know, three you minutes. Blow it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. better do it right. What kind of... These, are, these were monologues, right? You yes. You do a dramatic monologue. yes. Wow, see that's le- a little bit less of a thing today. I feel like it's more about scenes and doing a re- and with a reader and sometimes you don't even meet the actors anymore. You just yeah, they're on tape, you know. Right. And now it's all digital, so it's very different. But when I yes. went in, I would I would do I didn't like a lot of the monologues. I didn't feel like I could connect to them, so I did uh-huh. a monologue uh, a male monologue, oh. a man's monologue from David Henry Huang's uh, FOB. Okay, really? Mm-hmm. And that was my, you know, your gender fluid. I did that. I, I was I was gender fluid back yeah. then um, <laughs> with my monologues, and yeah, I also, yeah. I I liked um, Lily Tomlin's, uh, you know, the, she did a, a whole one woman show, and I sort of snuck oh, something out of there too. Oh, cool! Oh, wow! That's a fascinating. It she, role. And it was a, she was playing a homeless person in that one. Okay, and you had seen that? No, I had not seen it. I could but not even. Read it. I read it, yeah. yeah cool. I mean, th- back then it was all about, you know, Samuel French and reading all the plays yes. and... Oh, I used to work there. All of that in, yeah. in New York? I was in an Los intern Angeles. at Samuel French. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. I mean, it just has that... You could just sit there and oh, read and... Yeah, reading plays, yeah. And then you'd see sort of in the beginning, like the people that originated the play. Sure. Wow. Mm, yeah. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and so this was all... so and then, But so NYU... Was the first school, but then you switched. I went to NYU as my first year, and then I went to the University of Michigan. And, and I can I ask why there. was did you just transfer because it wasn't wasn't working at NYU or it it was nothing to do with the school actually it uh. was just that I had been I was born and raised in New York I went to school high school I went to Stuyvesant High School downtown and then I went to NYU I think and I was living at home mm-hmm. and gotcha I think that pressure or that lack of campus feel ah. um, was just making me quite, you know, like at 16 or whatever it was, I was like, I know everything. There's nothing you can't yeah. tell me. And then yeah. I decided, you know, I, I got to get away. Gotcha. And that was the best thing I could have done for myself because hmm. I really had a greater appreciation for my family and for hmm. the city and for yeah. everything. Everything just had a different perspective. Yeah, yeah, and I was surrounded by people from Ohio and oh, sure. uh, Michigan and, I mean, it was not, I was not in a cosmopolitan city, and I hadn't really traveled very much at uh, all when we were okay. younger. Yeah, I wow. mean, that was it. Like, it was New York. And Michigan was the draw because of their drama program. No, I did not go for drama. I just went to get out. Uh, okay. To anywhere. I, yes. And I know you studied languages there, but did yes. you do drama? Did you do plays? Or? I, I did. I don't want to say I did plays. I did. I took, a, like, a couple of classes oh, in acting. Okay. Yeah. Um, but in those classes were people that actually majored in acting gotcha musical yeah. theater etc so hmm. for me it was just uh something i was interested in but i didn't think it was going to be something realistic at that time right. and when hmm. i went to college i think that's where things really opened up for me because mm-hmm. i really had an interest in the subjects that i was taking yeah um and i was learning philosophy and oh cool I yeah i took literature and I mean it was a very different way of learning I took acting I took ceramics I mean there were things mm-hmm. that I, I took um, classes that I didn't know about but it was I was curious about it sure. wasn't just because it was you know in the syllabus sort of thing yeah and you really knew you it sounds like you really knew 
that you had to get out of that comfort zone of the place that you had born and raised. You needed new challenges. I needed to get out of myself a little bit. Yeah. And I think, you know, running around New York City with like Doc Martens and a big matrix, you know, black raincoat and sort of, I you know, like it. just <laughs> yeah. me against the world. Uh, I needed to break away. From yeah, that. just anywhere else. Yeah, I yeah, just had yeah. to change a bit. Yeah. I, I don't think um, you can ever go wrong changing, even if it feels wrong in the moment. You're, are you basically bi-coastal? No. Or are you very much here? I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm in New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually really want to hear about your, like, you go to the theater all the time, right? I'm there all That's the so time. That's so cool. Yeah. I was like, you were just here. <laughs> I know. No, because I, you're yeah. such a New Yorker. Like, you you live in Manhattan? I live in Manhattan now, uh-huh. yeah. And you, you love going to the theater. I mean, the, I've seen every play out okay. there. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, but... Was L.A. ever like, you must, you've taken jobs there. So was it ever Oh, I like... lived in L.A. for a long time, like over 10 years. When oh, you I first did. started, okay. I, I was in New York. I started in New York. I did a, a bunch of regional theater mm-hmm. um, in St. Louis, at, you know, oh, uh, wow. San Jose Rep, you know, um, the Berkeley Theater, you know, things like that. I was oh. kind of around. And then um, I moved out to Los Angeles um, based on somebody's suggestion, an agent's okay. suggestion. So I went. I had no, I yeah. mean, nothing was holding me back. Not a job. So I went and then um, hmm. I stayed and I enjoyed it. I loved it. I mean, you'll love it. Well, I mean, I just went out there just because I was open. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of people that did go out there and disliked it. And then, you know, they came back or they didn't or they just kept complaining. Sure, sure. Um, but for me, it's sort of like I'm in there and I'm going to be as present as possible. Yeah. And then when it was time for me to come back to New York, I just mm. knew it was time for me to come back. I wanted to be surrounded by different things, different people, different right. like a different culture. You know, it's very yeah, yeah. it's very uh, business specific there to a degree. Yeah. And I think that's that's fantastic for what you want to do or for what someone wants to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I I still enjoy being out. I was just out there for five months doing Why Women Kill. That must have – I was going to say that must have filmed there. Yes, exactly. It's a it fabulous, did. fabulous show. Thank you. <laughs> it's really – you're really awesome in it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> really amazing lines in that show. Oh, that are... <laughs> beyond. <laughs> beyond with the lines. You must have had a Quotables. lot of fun on that. <laughs> yeah. We laughed. We laughed a lot. <laughs> how many like how many different versions of um that line where you say as much as it would cheer me up to commit a felony right now <laughs> there are lines like that or like when you attack that woman and then say i'm drunk <laughs> oh girl really i went quotable. all out too i was like let me just pull her hair well, let me the just shoulder do it pads and the costuming yeah simone was definitely giving it the whole time and she was enjoying <laughs> That's every that moment 10 you're at that 10 That's she the... was started at 10 <laughs> Totally. She started at 10 and <sighs> just kept going. But, you know, the the amazing thing about Simone is that at 10, it mm. was still, like, very palatable, meaning, like, there was more mm. to, you know, what you didn't feel like, mm, it's less sort of left a bad taste in your mouth. It didn't seem like it uh, was, you know, going to go bad quickly. Yeah, or, like, we're still rooting for her. You still, there's something about her that you can really enjoy, even though she's really yeah. not in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> She's such not a feeling great it. Yeah, and by yeah. the way, she was, you know, in a very vulnerable <laughs> place yes. when uh, mm. this young man, who is her best friend's son, yeah. you know, seventeen, is interested in her. So yeah. why not? But that was, you know, she let it go. And <laughs> mm-hmm. that's so funny. You're talking about. So how do you how do you talk about your characters? How do you form these people? You talk about them in the third person, like they're. They're separate from you? How much um, of your own life is in Simone? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another story. Uh, um, I feel like I do talk about, I mean, I usually do talk about the characters in a, another yeah. way because I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm a separate person from that person. And mm-hmm. when I'm in that character, I'm there. I'm not running around being her on the s- stage when I'm not on camera. But yeah. There's something that you inhabit, you know, and the words really were able to carry that yeah. quite a bit. And Mark Cherry has such a wonderful way of uh, using words and just sort of using them like marbles and just sort of Ooh. putting them in your mouth and just letting them roll around. Oh, I love that. And Joe Keenan, who was also a writer on the show and mm. uh, focused mainly on the 80s storyline, uh-huh. yeah, uh, just delicious way of adding Hmm. humor in a very difficult, dramatic, sad moment. Very poignant. And, you know, obviously that 
I don't know. I don't want to say that it manipulates, uh, but it mm. really allows the audience to be part of something in a more intimate manner. Yeah, 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 yeah. As opposed to, I'm just going to, you know, I'm being funny or I'm being, you know, sad. It's not that. It's it's just, it mm. seems in some ways you almost give them a pause so they can laugh because sometimes it's, you want, like in a very difficult moment, you, you laugh mm. because you're so upset, you know, and totally. vice versa. It's, it's that um, uncomfortable laugh or like a letting off steam laugh. Yes, or where you're crying and then you're laughing because it's just so horrible, you know? It's yeah. Just, yeah. It's just like, it's very close. <laughs> Yeah, it's and very, the stakes manage to be... It's on top of each other. It's like yeah. Velcro. One needs Ooh. the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And marbles in your mouth. Yes. You must think about dialogue as... You're one of those actors that thinks about dialogue as music or as poetry or as a... You think about it rhythmically. Absolutely. I know you do because of your comedic timing. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> it's very rhythmic. Like, you understand these things. Well, I think there's... Uh, I think with rhythm and with characters, mm. they have to have a certain... Uh, metronome and Ooh, yeah. when you do have this kind of a character there's something very syncopated about her mm-hmm. which you can enjoy cool you know and uh-huh. it's not so da 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 it's not that and that's what makes it uh inviting uh-huh to continue listening how much of this is like an outside in approach it's never really outside in. It's inside mm. out for sure. You're inside out. Because okay. I, I can describe it, but when I'm doing it, I'm not thinking about it. But if, if gotcha. I take myself out of it to try to mm. make it more um, understandable, then I would say, yeah. you know, she is a syncopated character. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. She is unpredictable, um, but you know what would set her off at the same time, you know? Mm. It, it's, it's hard because she really does have a, a lot of different levels that she goes into and mm-hmm. goes under as well mm-hmm. you know and some characters don't necessarily go under gotcha or not yeah. under all the time and yeah. Yeah. she does yeah. and and what she's doing is very real to her at the moment but it becomes funny for the audience yes um pl- that idea of playing comedy with uh it's high stakes for the character it's not funny for the character necessarily oh no she's no, dead serious yeah, when she's, she's like <gasps> Threatening to kill people. Wake up! You know, like, yeah. don't even don't even try to die on me. You need to suffer. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> and that was another example of, like, I'm laughing until you had that moment where, like, the ambulance is coming, but she sort of collapses a little. And she's kind of like, I don't actually want you to die. And right. Like, and you don't know that. I think silent. when she turns after she gets off the phone, yeah. you think, oh, my God, is she going to go over there and choke him to death or something? Sure. You know? And then she, she walks over, yeah. right? And then... In that moment, she even realizes, like, God, don't die, you this know? Is, yeah, it's a human. But I think that what I really wanted was to, to have her so charged that mm. you didn't really know what she was going to do. Totally. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't think people expected her to go over there and slap him in the face. Yeah. And then she goes right. back to continue having a very normal conversation <laughs> on the phone. But then when she gets off the phone, you know, she sort of does a very sharp turn. Yeah. And I felt yeah. like those moments really helped define the character without exposition. Totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I, I'm fascinated by this idea of the inside-out approach, which I don't like asking people anymore about, do you have a process? Because, of course, you don't have the same process for every character. But the inside-out approach, do you then watch yourself and go, oh, I'm, I'm so in character that I, like, do you recognize what you're doing on that conscious level? Do you like watching yourself, first of I all? I don't. You don't? I don't. I mean, I've seen, obviously, the premiere, and you go to the premiere of something, you see it. You got to, Yeah. But I you generally, can't bail on yeah. That. But generally, I don't watch myself um, because I feel like even directing. Like I'll watch, I'll watch if I'm directing. I'll need to see the playback, but I'll just sort of have mm-hmm. them f- fast forward through it just so I can see the camera move. Okay. Um, mm. And make sure that that's right because I know what I did or what I didn't do, you're and I know what I was in the scene with the other actors. You know yourself. what I mean? But there's yeah. other things that you can't look at when you're in the scene itself gotcha. yeah um mm, so it's informative in that way but yeah not. and i think that's when you trust the the production of what they're doing and the director mm, and cool. you know that that you are a part of something and you're mm. a team um and you're a part of that team so mm. you're not you know just idling on your own cool and and and, that, yeah. and what i mean by that is that i can't control you know, outside of what I'm doing, everything else that's happening. Right. So you have to sort of trust that it's all being captured and they're getting what they need. Gotcha. Um, yeah. In order to, otherwise you're just, you're pulling yourself apart and you're just, 
I think when you become that microscopic, you start to lose and dilute the essence of what you are trying to convey. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you then you start to. The de- I think the it's it's very important to be detailed mm-hmm. in in preparation with your lines with you know and then you can be really free cool. with your body and with your um castmates and even mm-hmm. with the director and the camera so that you can play but if you're focused on the lines and all those things you start to gotcha. uh become more one dimensional cuz you're just you you're you know your frontal lobe is just there mm-hmm. you know and i think yeah when when you say you know do you look at yourself or do you i think if you're too focused on oh this is you know that was not the, oh, the skirt is twisted yeah. it starts to you start to become i don't know too particular with two in your head well you don't go up to the it's not your job to go up to the director and say you know what i you can say i'd like another take Mm -hmm. right but you can't say oh i i see like i had a fly away let's go back yeah you know what i mean like you can't let that go it's it's becoming a little too myopic yeah and you could just kind of go crazy doing that stuff yeah there's a certain amount of perfection that you want in the performance itself that you elicited or you were able to convey or you were able to you feel it like it's almost like you disappear you don't even remember what you did when you feel like you've hit that note that's so great this is such a that's like the window into how you is this true for every role like when you sit down with can we can we talk about watson absolutely because watson Watson. like the same idea of like it's First, based on maybe text, and you're building the character inside out rather than she's not quite as maybe um, physically, uh, she doesn't have the shoulder pads like Simone. <laughs> like she's a little bit more like of an every woman who I think is much more uh, internal, emotional kind yes. of thing. Yes. You know? She's a much quieter character. Mm-hmm. She's very internal, like you said. Um, I think when she does have an external moment, mm-hmm. that it is very thought through uh-huh yeah because her, you know her he she initiated her career with this man mm-hmm. sherlock as a sober companion mm-hmm. so there's a great deal of awareness that she has on a very consistent level of her surroundings of the person that she's with cool. you know she's always um it's more contained yeah, yeah she's yeah, more yeah. focused on what's happening with them and, and taking care of mm-hmm. other people and Simone is is not as effusive about, you know, others. <laughs> Empathy, yes. Yeah. She's empathetic, and you see that in the end. But I think mm-hmm. she's just, she's she wants more. More is more. Sure, sure. And the, the through line there being, like, uh, I love this idea of, like, you're, you're over-preparing, or you're, you're thoroughly, thoroughly preparing for what you can control. Everything that you can't control, you can't control. And... You're also doing that thing of kind of letting go of all the preparation in order to be in the moment. Correct. And to you, be listening. You come in with all of the ingredients. Yeah. And oh. then you allow them to decide how to, you know, you and you allow yourself to decide depending mm. on who you're working with, what happens in that moment, what happens in that scene. Mm-hmm. But I think if you come in unprepared, and, and I think, that, you know, with dialogue and the, the aspect of the procedure on yeah. that show, sure. you really had to th- memorize. I mean, I spent. It's a network show. Yeah. I spent hours and days like <gasps> lost in dialogue. I mean, that's all I did. I would sure. I would come home from work and I would study and I would on the weekends I would take hours to study and um I didn't do it alone. I did it with somebody else like on the phone or on, you know, Skype, whatever it was. I think that to in order to have that, you know, homework done for the week because by the time you got home from a 16-hour day or 18-hour whatever it was, you just didn't have it in you to your mind was just, you know, <laughs> All the waves came out. Yeah, wow. <laughs> all the waves in your brain, all those little nice gray matter that's like sort of clumped together and yes. looks like the way it does. Yeah. It's all pulled out and it just looks like pasta. Yes. Yeah, and you need to be like nice and I tight. Need to squish it back. Yeah, you need to <laughs> you need to get it in there. But <laughs> that's the thing with Net- Allison Janney was saying that for West Wing that she she her personal life suffered because she was sitting there memorizing. I. <laughs> don't For know years. when I, yeah I haven't had a personal life in a long time oh no yeah so is that true like you how what's the schedule for that it's over well we now. did 24 episodes a year so it was 10 months out of the year mm-hmm. and then we had about six to seven weeks and then you know we'd go back into pre-production and then mm-hmm. we were on you know five days a week do and you long get hours used to that or is it too it just sounds exhausting. you do become used to it because it becomes this sort of marathon where you're not just trying to get to the end you're just trying to pace yourself Oh, you cool. know, to get to that 
end of the season or or to the winter break mm, you could and then that. yeah but you know as soon as you started to decompress then you were back into it and and mm. you just your body gets into a uh it gets very accustomed to uh mm. punishment <laughs> oh my god <laughs> right like you wow. get used to the the and I, when I say punishment, I, I love doing what I do. I mean, I cannot think of anything else that I would want to do. Yes. But your body is punished. You know, your mind is, you, you know, the amount of sleep deprivation mm-hmm. and the amount of exhaustion uh, with the the temperatures, because we shot in New York. Oh, yeah. Um, so it was freezing or it was really hot. I mean, yeah. you just deal with it and you just go through it. And I think once you really stop, and it's not just stopping for two weeks for like a break, you, when you really stop and you're done with something like that, yeah. you have really, you've won because you're alive <laughs> and you've been challenged to the max, but you've done something really incredible totally. just by, you know, whether the show is a success or not, or anyone's watching, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You have physically put yourself through and mentally through something quite incredible it's like the longest gestation you can have you know i mean it's and like then you've given birth and you're it's like, like wow birth. it's very physical like it you must it's have thought so of it as physical. A, you have to take care of your body your body is your tool it's your instrument that's right? it what kind, is this is it do you think of it as self-care like what do you do to decompress or to squish the brain matter back together make it look wrinkly again um <laughs> i i <laughs> I would, you know, people like, you want to go away? As I didn't even want to mm-hmm. go away. I just wanted mm-hmm. to be in my home mm-hmm. and have a staycation and just yeah. be there. I just, it was very rare that I could just lie in my bed and, you know, be in my pajamas. Great. It's a, It was a very rare occurrence. So yeah. to me, I really enjoyed um, not having a plan because, That's you know, you great. get out of work at you know, 10.06. You got to be back at, you know, they pick you up at 9.36. Everything is scheduled. It's, yeah. it's very, you know, military. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have to be. And, you know, you got a 30-minute lunch and then, you know, get a 10-minute break or, you know, 10-minute yeah. warning or whatever it is. You're, you are there. There's never a point when they don't know where you are. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it's over, you do need to just sit. When it's over. And, you know, you do have one of the most connected experiences with the people that you are working with oh, sure. the the crew and the cast it is a very um it's a beautiful family that you create mm. uh, that you would not be able to do under uh, not that kind of pressure and you know we all work through it and we all get through it and i was able to uh create such great friendships and yeah. I, I mean, my, my life changed. I had a son. I was started yeah. directing. Yeah. I was able to be in one place for seven years. You mm-hmm. know, I always had a bag packed, and I still do to this day, gotcha. of just the basics, and I'd go, you know. Yes. And I didn't need to use that very often, <laughs> to be nice. honest. Yeah. And so it's a very uh, – it's cathartic. Sure. And to ending, to ending it must be – I mean, specifically for elementary. Have you been in something as long as this? Never. Okay. It's the longest job Adam I've ever had. This, this opportunity was, was really, uh, I've never experienced anything like it. So is it sad to be done? I do not feel sad at all. Okay. I don't. And I, I, I'm not saying that because I feel joyous. It's that it's, I don't feel yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's over. I feel like it was a part of my life and mm. it was an experience. Mm. And I really fully s- sat in that and bathed in it and, and really like lived it. Yeah. And I came out, and I, I feel like all those things are still with me, and I carry them with me. It's not like I left anything behind. Cool. Yeah. And so it, to me, it's not about an ending. It was sort of like, if anything, it was a beginning. Amazing. Because some people talk about, like, they feel like they uh, their character has died. Like, they feel like the character is someone they've gotten to know, and they'll never see them again. Huh. And it's sad. But, like... The completion of a marathon, like you said, the catharsis of ending this experience is a joyous, that's a joyous thing. It was. Yeah. I felt so, I was in wonder that this wow. could happen and that it continues to happen and that mm. people are, and then when I see other people starting a new show, I know exactly what they're going through. I understand. Mm. And I feel like you, you can do this. Just pace yourself yeah. and, yeah. you know, don't focus on these things. Make sure you take care of yourself. Yeah. It's a real understanding, um, and I don't find it to be something that I regret. I mean, why would you, you know? Right. And I don't think, mm-hmm. like, Joan Watson is never going to 
be dead to me. Like she Good. was a part of my life, and so is Simone, and so is Oren. You know, all of these mm. characters are are you know now in some ways this is the legacy you leave behind, and that's why we're oh, lucky cool. that we have these um, these stories on film that you can right. rep- you know sort of relive or sometimes you know like there's it's impossible to see all the content that's out there now so Absolutely. you get to see yeah. something for the first time you know that you cool. may never that there was been out forever that nobody saw yeah. um or everybody saw at the time it but you didn't and sure. now you, I'm I'm able to sort of sit and enjoy this library that is going to be cool. you know in perpetuity essentially and and everyone has that access as well that's awesome yeah Gosh, and the, I'm thinking too of like you've you've. To me, sometimes you look at someone's resume and you're like, this person's never had a dry spell, but I know that you must have, <laughs> and you've worked in so many different genres, so many different projects, and like, what is your relationship with rejection and with? You mentioned the self tape thing. Have you ever sent in a self tape? Are you auditioning still? I have sent in a self tape. Okay. I mean, I I mean, a while back I sent in a self tape for. A movie that I didn't. Th- I was like, "There's no way," but it was a small part. Okay, oh, you know, okay. and yeah, yeah, yeah. and but people do. I mean, I know for me when I'm directing, and when I was acting in shows, and I couldn't go into the actual casting office. We we would cast people off tape. Okay, completely. Yeah, yeah. But um, listen, if you cannot understand rejection, mm. this is not the business for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a, a personal affront. Okay. And I say that mm. because now that I'm on the other side yeah. and I've I've been able to be in casting, there are so many talented people. And it's not because you didn't do a great job. And there, it's almost like you look too much like the lead. Okay. You know, you're sure. too tall. You're yeah. too pretty. There's so many reasons why you don't get cast. And you don't know that. I think... That's why I think feedback is incredibly important uh-huh. because you know, like, oh, it's not about me. And you can think, oh, that's what they said. But th- it's actually true. And I have actually told casting directors before, like, please tell this person mm. whether or not they didn't get cast or um, or if I see them out in the theater or something like that. Um, or if they were cast and they were, you know, we shot the scene and they cut the scene. Totally. That it was not about them. Yeah. And and mm. I wish that people would know that more because it is in it's true. Mm. It's a fact. And it's too bad that there's no way to give feedback like you did a great job, but you know, right. this or next time know your lines more or you were too tall or you were too, you you look too similar. I mean, whatever it is, it helps you totally. to hone your craft as an artist. Yeah. Is there is there something about the giving the feedback that um, people feel awkward doing that, and so maybe it's not done enough? I mean, maybe they do, but it's the only way to learn. And my right. my honest manager feedback. was was always honest with me and huh. always upfront. And you know, you can't improve how you audition. And auditioning itself is a craft. Yeah. You might audition. You might. Some people are not good at auditioning, but they're. Inc- they're like beyond talented. Yeah, absolutely. And so they can never get past that to get the job to then be seen and mm-hmm. be appreciated. Yeah. And so there is sort of a section of just an, if you can audition really well, doesn't mean you're the best actor. You just know how to, you know, walk sure. into a room and present yourself. I mean, yeah, totally. Auditioning is not a, ma- a major in school. It's not necessarily something you're the only way to train in that skill is to do it. Right. There's no, there's no you, degree. You have to do it and you have to be allow yourself to enjoy what's going on. And every time you mm. go in there and I think it's sort of like y- your your job is not to get every job. Ah, cool. Ooh. Your job is very much like the lottery. You play the lottery. You win <laughs> once. Great. You just yeah. keep playing. That's what you do. You yeah. cannot expect to win the lottery every time. It's not possible. Mm-hmm. It's not, y- you know. It's not what the goal is. The goal is to win, but you've got to go in there. You've got to play. Yeah. You've got to play to win. Yeah, and and love that and and be okay with the not winning the lottery. Well, know that you you went in prepared. Mm. You mm. you know you felt comfortable in the room. You felt like yourself in the room. And then when you played the character, mm. you were. Yourself. I think what we what I see and what I when I go in is like. Um, because I love actors and I I see when they come in the room, you know, g- 
go in prepared. It doesn't matter if yeah. you have two lines. Or, like, bring in the paper, bring in your sides. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you can avoid looking down at it, but go in there, like, having that, those lines memorized completely. Yeah, yeah. And go for it. Because if you make a choice and it's not what they were looking for, they can see that you made a choice and mm -hmm. then you can, they'll, they'll say, you know what, that was great. Can you try it this way? Because they know you made a choice. And totally. when you make a choice, it mm -hmm. defines who you are. Uh, and it gives you a character in that room. And I'm, and I'm not talking about the character you're playing, but a character for yourself. Like it gives you a personality oh, that shows sweet. strength. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right, right. And flexibility is then important because you can't come in with one set thing that you're going to do. Yeah, you because if you're kind of like lost and neither here nor there, mm. it's hard for them to give a direction. It was like, well, that was good in the beginning, but then it kind of fell apart. Like you don't sure. know where to go. So if you go in and you're playing it this way, yeah. they can say that was great. Let's take it down. Yeah you know, a notch or like make, maybe make it this way, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, it's sort of a hard, um, it's hard when you, when an actor comes in and they're, they know their lines, but they, they're just sort of amorphous. Amorphous or also nervous. Like nerves are big. Oh my God. Huge it's thing. impossible not to be nervous. Right? Yeah. How do you, I mean, you're past this now, I feel like. Oh but... no, you're never past it. <laughs> you still get nervous? Of course. It's part of That's like who hear. you are. It's good to know. Yeah. I, I mean, I think nervousness is is excitement okay. and it's yeah. being um, aware that you are sharing something, you know, like what is the point of, of art? It's to share, you know, because if you're doing it at home or you're painting at home, you got thousands of paintings and f photographs and you're doing monologues and you've got, a, you know, you've got your one a, a one woman show. Like it's not, that's your, you know, you're turning into gray gardens, like just get the bunch of cats and. <laughs> You know, just shroud yourself yes. with like newspapers and you know, like become a hoarder. Like yeah. that's not the point. The point is to open yourself up cool. and yeah. expose yourself, and mm. you know, in to a certain degree, humiliate yourself. It's it's a certain right. amount of um, mm. being humble and accessible and understanding. Like that is part of human nature. How is it easy? No. no, because there's no. no one there. But you have to build a stable groundwork for yourself to say, you know what, you did everything you could. Right. If you didn't go in there and do everything you could, then that's a different thing. Like you, then you're just going to be punishing yourself for not having done everything. Oh, for sure. I mean, actors are gonna, yeah. You're gonna punish yourself anyway, but uh, totally. But I, I, I have always enjoyed doing the work. I, I find it to be, um, so fulfilling, and I think it really is what keeps a person. Uh, curious and mm. uh you need curiosity to keep you young and fresh in your body do yeah. you know what i mean oh yeah and when i say that i mean like you are you're made of cells and and i think in order to keep those those that biology in yourself moving and sure. growing you need to then inject that positivity and that understanding that mm -hmm. you are you know, a unique being, and you're going to offer something quite different from anyone else. Yeah. And that is what's going to charge you as mm -hmm. a human being. And, and we are made of skin and bones and yeah. flesh. And, and these are things that are uh, stimulated by uh, your mind. And yeah. your mind is what's going to create your, you know, yourself as a healthy being. Sure. It's like the craving of, um, of newness, just craving new challenges, new ideas, new... Um... That's what then trains your brain to go in different directions. That's how we grow. Exactly. And I think key. the one thing you have to untrain yourself of is mm. sometimes you have to unlearn behavior, whether yeah. it's family karma or if it's things that you are accustomed to. You know, there's a lot of rituals that we pick up. And yeah. it's important to know that those are those are things that help build a like a foundation for yourself mm -hmm. but in in the landscape that you are going to journey on you have to be prepared mm -hmm. to let go of some of that baggage some of that luggage yeah. pick things up on the way yeah. you know you can't be too attached to things i think that will help you also open up as an artist to be able to absorb new things yeah it's a skill in and of itself to identify the behaviors that aren't helpful. 
I mean, it, I wish that's someone tough. would just hand you a piece of paper and exactly. say, you know what? These are the things you work on. Great. Yeah. Like, why does it have to be like, oh, it's a daily <laughs> now I have thing. to work on this? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Why didn't somebody just tell me from the beginning? Because <laughs> exactly. now I feel like, exactly. how much time do I have? Why is there no manual? Yeah, why is there no manual? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Especially in your, especially in the acting industry, where there's no certainty, you're gonna go through dry spells. You're gonna have. I think the the lack of certainty is a given, mm-hmm. and I think some people like that. You know, nobody wants to huh. necessarily work in the office, but there is a, there, it is a business. And yeah. what I really learned from being in the show is that it is a business, and you are a commodity. Oh, being an elementary. Yes. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's about. It's like a commercials mm-hmm. and who's going to invest in that show and wow. and you have to understand there's that's you know you we're in our bubble like talking about the characters and where we're going and they're mm. talking about something completely different and so there's an amount of participation that you also have to allow um, gotcha. in that in that sector yeah that is very important like doing press doing press being yeah. you know available for um, I don't know just understanding that that is an important value sure. it's not just about this one it's thing about the craft it can't just be about the craft because like you said great gardens then you're just at home on your own <laughs> well you know what's weird is that you do think it's about the craft until you show up and you realize it's not it's a very different it's like like i said when you go behind the scenes you really see how different it is and how yeah uh, and you know and i have to say that People do protect actors. Like they really say, oh, this person cannot work, you know, this amount of hours or they have this out. You know, they, uh-huh. they I mean, you would hope that that's what they would want. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you have to look out for the crew and the cast and everyone involved. I think that's your job as mm-hmm. the producer or the creator because you're not going to get a good product. And, and maybe you will, but it won't. you won't have loyalty. People can't sure. last that long yeah. given the givens. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more going on than just... Uh... Just line memorization or just that inside out character approach. It's a lot of factors. There are. And, you know, sometimes you don't really have to involve yourself in them if sure. you don't need to. Sure, sure, sure. But if you want to sort of open up and understand why some things happen, you can always go behind the scenes and sort of hang yeah. out and find out. And direct and cast. Yeah, and... or just be in the office or mm. intern somewhere or, you know, just being a fly on the wall can really teach you so much. Absolutely. That's great advice. I think I have to, okay, I have to ask you these silly questions now. Oh, I, lo- I love silly questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's called the Backstage <laughs> Five. But we talked about um, <clears throat> how you got your SAG or equity card. Do you remember which? Does it remember? Does I it got matter? my equity card first. Okay. Do you remember what show that was? Um, let me think. Uh... And when was this? You came back to New York after. I came. After I graduated from Michigan, I came back to New York. I was selling T-shirts in Soho. Um, I was working as a hostess uh, in Soho. Also, that was my next question. What are your survival jobs? My sur- your non-acting oh, what, jobs. I did. I did everything. Okay. I, did, I sold T-shirts on the weekends. I cool. was a secretary during the weekdays, mm. and at week on weeknights, I, I worked as a hostess mm-hmm. um, at a rib joint in Soho, and also I worked at a clothing store part time as well. Um, so I kind of did everything because I really knew that acting was a business. Aha. Uh-huh. I didn't know it on the level that I do now, but I knew that I needed <laughs> yes. money in order to survive Good. because okay. there was no way for me to have any flexibility if I didn't have any money. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. You got to cobble it together. I just sort of hit the ground running and I did not look back. Mm-hmm. And I just – I didn't want to be in a situation where – I was going to be, I don't know, it, so vulnerable mm. that I would just do anything. Oh, yeah. yeah and so I wanted to have some, or... I needed to have some savings, like whether it's like $500 or $200. I just didn't want to be broke. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? As it was, I was sleeping on the floor in my brother's studio apartment with really? his roommate in a bunk bed. Like it was just, you know, everything <laughs> with no kitchen. So wow. that was happening. But you know, I just, I needed to get some. I needed to get beyond some my flexibility, feet. Flexibility, some yeah. yeah. I didn't want to be like on Boy, my knees. You did that New York actor life. I did it. I fully did that. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For how long? That was a couple of years, or just only right after you moved back. I want to say it was for like maybe a year and a half or so, and yeah, I then moved out to L.A. Like I, I was auditioning here, yeah. and then would do. 
um, I did extra work. Oh, okay. Oh. I, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. on commercials and things like that. Yeah. And then I um, I went and did some theater. Mm-hmm. I, I, I went to all the different, through the Ross reports, I went to all the different agencies and then signed up, you know, and they, they weren't taking, like at that time, there was not a lot of um, diversity. Uh-huh. And so they were like, there's not much out there gonna... for you, but we're willing to, you know, maybe send you out for a few things. So, okay. I freelanced with a, like a, a lot of agencies, mm-hmm. um, and that's how I was sent out. Because huh. no one really, there was not mu- they just didn't feel it was worth, you know, worth it for them to sign me. So I just sort of freelanced with a bunch of people, and then um, this woman from an agent uh, agency said, "You know what? You should go out to L.A." I, I had basically film. tested for a bunch of. Um, soap operas, which I didn't get. Ooh. And then she said, "You're you should just go out to like Los Angeles." And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." And I did. Yeah. And What's that was that it. Thing of you didn't know enough to just you're just saying yes to everything. Just I yeah. said yes to everything. Yeah. And I worked as a a second second okay. stage uh, assistant to the stage manager gotcha. uh, for this show called The Wash, and it was uh, by Philip Congatanda. It was a play that he had written. Okay. And in it was George Takai and Jody Long, and it was oh. all Asian uh, cast. So I would go around and I asked them, like, what's your advice and, oh, you know, cool. things like that. Because I kind of knew. That's that fly on the wall. Thing. That was, yeah. yeah. And I would run out and get coffee, and I was sweeping the stage wow. and, you know. I mean, whatever. I didn't care. I, yeah. I had no. You weren't miserable doing this. No. no. I was curious. I had no ego. Mm-hmm. And so That's I'd run great. out and get lunches. And, I mean, I didn't care. That's great. And I wanted to learn. I was just absorbing everything around me. And they gave me their thoughts on what the business was like for an Asian person. Yes. And, you know, I took that and I was like, I, something's got to give. Okay. And so I just, knowing that, I just... <laughs> kept going. Kept going. See, because I wanted to ask about representation and, and, and the idea of, like, blazing a trail because... You didn't have a lot of examples of people who, like, did you think about representation? Were you just, is it that thing of you didn't know enough, so you just kept going? Or is it like? Uh, they were like, well, we don't really have much to go, to do for you, but we'll free like, great. Right. So you were being told uh, there's not much out there. Oh, there was like nothing. It. And you were just I would go yes on a, maybe, would... maybe one or two auditions mm-hmm. once a month, if that, mm-hmm. you know. And then when I went out to Los Angeles, I was with the same agency uh, that this woman um, sent me out like well she just suggested it you know mm-hmm. um, she then I met some people at the agency on the west coast and they sent me out on some things I was just open yeah but by the way I got lost everywhere I drove I, I was I couldn't be more lost <laughs> I was like I'm on La Cienega now I'm on La like where am I <laughs> like, <laughs> my west or east like where are the numbers <laughs> everything's got a name totally I yeah. was like what you're such a New Yorker. You I was know. so lost. Yeah. And it was like they had the, you know. That's going to be me. You're going to be good. Because you have, you have, you have like have GPS. Google. Yeah. You have, you know, you have that But at now. the time you were, yeah, you were lost. Oh, it was next level. I was like, I'm south, I think. I don't know where I am. But, I, you know, that's why you have to really leave yourself enough time so you don't get lost in audition. Ah, yeah. But then uh, this woman that I met there who was an agent, um, Called me. She left the agency and called me after I'd done a, a guest stint on uh, okay. L.A. Law, and I was I was speaking Chinese the whole time. Oh my god! And she said, "I don't know what you said, but I felt like you really I understood what you were saying, and I, <laughs> wow. I really felt what you were trying to convey." And I left, you know, my agency and went with her. Okay. And and never turned back. Amazing. So and then she became a manager, and now she's still my manager to this day. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we've and been then together for. Was Ali McBeal soon after that? Ali McBeal was um, not no. Your, not your it own. was a Big Pearl oh, with uh-huh. Rhea Perlman. It was a comedy, a thirty-minute comedy. Yeah. Um, and Rhea and I are dear friends, and she's she is my mentor. And mm. then I did Payback. Okay. Mm-hmm. With Mel Gibson. And then I did Alan McBeal. Mm-hmm. And all of these things were connected with the team of people that were working with me because Mary Ellen would send me out mm-hmm. on things that were not listed as Asian. Gotcha. She just kept pushing it. Yeah. She just kept, you know, and yeah. and I'd go in there. I'm like, I'm the only person in here that's of any color. Of cor- well, of course. But then it's also, I do feel like you've played a lot of roles that that on paper didn't specify, didn't need to be Asian, but which is huge. But before then, Yes. 
It was right. always like Before exotic moment, or yes, like the exactly. you know you're speaking just the Chinese mistress. Somebody, yeah. And this is this was a new opening. Totally. And it was a forced opening. <laughs> yeah. You know, it wasn't like, hey, it was like <laughs> It's like kick, kick that door the down. doll down. See, I like that. There you go. With both That's feet. The answer to that question. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you just do it, and you just keep going, and you don't think about it. You don't think that you're. Don't overthink you know, everyone's it. like, "Oh, you're a pioneer." I'm like, not really. I'm just doing something because I want it. I because I I believe in it, and I I think that I'm bringing something different to it. Sure. And then so sure. Alamibio and happened, the, and, and then the hard work is part of that, and the talent is part of that, and the. The experience begets experience, and you it's just a keep connection going. of all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ingredients that will create this. Sure, right? and it's not that you set out to be the most famous Asian American actress, right. In the world, no. Yeah, it is like a true passion and love for what I do. That's what's in conjunction me. with, you know, having uh, a, a group of people or, or to to say, you know what, I'm just going to cold call. Oh, oh, I'm just going to send you in. Send you in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People What's the worst that can you? happen? Yeah, totally. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Why not? Just say yes. Why not? Yeah. That's great. Oh, my God. Um, what is one performance every actor should see and why? Film, TV, theater, anything. There's so many. I have to say that I saw Kate Blanchett mm-hmm. in A Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, amazing. Oh. Bam. Uh. And when I walked in and I sat down the theater, when the, and it started, the lights came up and she started. And I was with my uh, my other manager, Peg, and we were sitting in the audience. And we looked at each other. We're like, she's already playing the end of the show. Oh. Oh. It was already at 10. Oh, my God. Like, where is she going to go with this? We're like. Oh How do you sustain yeah, we were like, this Oh, this is going to be a long, you know, two <laughs> hours or what. Yeah. She elevated this really? character and this show. It was mind-blowing. I bet. I mean, That's I awesome. couldn't believe what happened after that moment. You start at the end. It's, she started – she created this mm. – character that you know in your mind you kind of know where it's going you have an, obviously it's a classic mm-hmm. very different wow it's seeing something with the same materials the clay all of it and it's a completely different sculpture uh, it's a completely different form of art mm-hmm. she wow. changed what this play she, it's almost like she took the words and just made something completely different uh. I and I, oh. you know, it's like brownies and a souffle. It, I don't even know. <laughs> she just took it and she blew it out of the water. And this is quite a while ago. Yeah. But it, it was, to me, it, I mean, I've seen so many wonderful performances. That's the one, though. I don't, I don't know, but I just, when you say that, and I know that I went in there and I thought, oh, God. Where, like, who, wait, who's, why did this happen? Why is this, why did the director tell her to do this? You know, right. come in like From that. The first moment, yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, God, no, you know, because, you know, you're such a big fan of that person or, or the, of the play or whatever it was. Totally. And then you're like, you're cringing, but then you think, and then she, and she just pulls it off anyway. She, she didn't just pull it off. <laughs> she recreated, it's like she recreated another planet and then was like, that. come on, yeah. and invited you on. You're like, there's water there? And she's like, yes. yeah, like that. That's such a great metaphor. Yeah. I love when you're watching something and you're like, did this person invent acting? <laughs> like, I've never seen acting before this moment, you know? <laughs> she was that. It was the whole thing was alive. That's awesome. Um, wh- uh, what is your worst audition horror story? Oh, so many. Um, I was in an, I was in a room with a group of people and... Um, I ended up on the fl- floor. <laughs> the director was like, had me in a headlock, wrestling me on the ground. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like the male very, director. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, it was very as a bad Me Too movement. It's inappropriate. Moment. Yeah. It was so inappropriate. Yeah. And it was clearly, and like everyone was there watching, and, and it was sort of like everyone was complicit, as far as I'm concerned. Um, that was pretty bad. The headlock, pretty 
Headlock. Like you're in a dress, you're like, you you know, you've been preparing, you go in for the meeting, and then you're on the ground in a headlock. <laughs> like, how did I get here? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. really bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> okay, and then last question. Uh, what's one piece of advice that you would give your younger self? That that green, naive person that you were talking about. I would say it's hard because you don't, you know, you live this life and you live this journey as that person. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to say, you know, you should have turned left when you went right, you know? Yeah. So I I feel like we made all the right turns, Mm -hmm. you know, and and you press on the gas in the beginning and then you ran out of gas for a little bit. And Mm -hmm. so it's hard because, you know, you you don't learn. You're like, oh, now I have to sort of fill the tank when I see it's going down. Uh So it's it's... If I were to give anyone, especially myself, some advice, I would just say to stop Hmm. um, even when you don't want to, to look Hmm. around for a minute. Yeah. Just because it goes by so quickly. Hmm. I I think it's I can I can draw the analogy of you know, now that I have a child who's four Mm -hmm. and everyone's like, oh, it goes so fast, you know. Mm. And sometimes I'm like, it's not feeling really fast right now. (laughs) Like, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. But they say, you know, the hours and the minutes go slowly, but the years go quickly. Uh, And I think that it's true because you're in the moment. You're like, I'm never going to make it to winter, you know, to the winter hiatus because I'm so, you know, I, 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 it's, it's, it's not even Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. But sometimes you just have to stop and really look at what, this is yeah. and what it is that this fantasy world hmm. and breathe it in and you can keep going and you should keep going but yeah. to not forget to stop because you can get so caught up and it, it can start to really become a gnarled mess yeah and i think and sometimes it's like it's a gnar- maybe it looks like a gnarled mess and it is but what a what a gnarled mess yeah take right? a moment and just look at the because at the mess. i mean coming from wherever that i came from and to be living this superb life <laughs> um and i i've enjoyed every minute of it and i do think sometimes i didn't really stop to look and think oh yeah. this is wonderful i did but i want to do that more. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent advice. <laughs> That's really, really good. Because it's also simple. Stop and and take a breath and look at it. At the gnarled mess. Stop and look at the gnarled mess and like, <laughs> what? What a gnarled mess in wonder, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Going back to that idea of curiosity. Like too, to like, enjoy the mess, even yeah. if it's a mess. Yeah. You know, not like, oh, how are we going to, you know? Yeah. Like how to get myself in the head's headlock, you know? It's like, like, <laughs> like more like I oh. laugh at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lucy, thank you. This was really awesome. Are you kidding me? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with you. <laughs> I was obsessed with you before, but I'm really obsessed with you now because that was an excellent. Really. I'm gonna make a T-shirt for you. What an old mess. In the Envelope, an awards podcast, is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City and Soundbox LA, Mark Rose Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Thanks as always to podcast producer extraordinaire Jamie Muffet and to the team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. That's right, 100% free. For more exclusive content, join us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Who would you like us to interview next? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another glimpse in the envelope. <laughs>